Hi, welcome back. If you've been following along with our lava lamp tutorial, um, you'll have got to about here. You will have a dynamic simulation that looks something like this. And this is just the very basics. There's a lot of room here for you to improve on that. Uh, we just wanted to give you a tutorial that would show you some modeling, some dynamics, and now some lighting and texturing. So our lighting and shading in this case is I won't actually be using any physical textures. So here's what we came up with, uh, which is a very simple, easy sort of lighting scheme. Um, so if you're new to Maya, this shouldn't be so difficult to wrap your head around. And this is actually lit, believe it or not, even though as you can see it's indoors with physical sun and sky. Now I've done this because again we're trying to show you a few of the features of Maya. So without any further ado, let's jump straight in. And the first thing I'm going to want is some sort of environment to put this on. In fact, if you look here, you can see this is actually surrounded by an environment. It's actually just a sphere. So before I do that, however, I have noticed that when I zoom into this and I have this ticked so I can see my camera, this is what will appear in my render view. Um, and I always like to have that. So if you don't have it, what tends to happen is you'll sort of go for a render and the top and bottom will be chopped off and you'll spend forever trying to frame your shot. So this resolution gate um, is perfect and you can also turn this one on so it dims out the background if you like. So anyway, just a quick tip there for when you do your renders just to get a look at what will actually be in shot. But when I zoom in, I'm getting quite a bit of lens distortion here, more than I'd like. So I'm going to select the camera I'm on, which is perspective in this case, select its shape and change the focal length from 35 millimeter to 55 millimeter. Okay, that just helps with the lens distortion a bit. Okay, so environment, basic sphere doesn't really get much more simple in this in terms of environment and just go ahead and scale it all up until your scene is surrounded. And then I thought it would be quite nice to put this lamp on something. So for that, a simple polygon plane will be just fine. I'll just rotate that a little bit and sort of stretch it out. I just want to catch it so it's sort of with the background. Um, I'll take a quick test render. Okay, so there you go. That's kind of table-like background sort of matches our reference, which is here. And our reference one, as you notice, is a bit cockeyed, which is fine. It's just a question of what look you prefer more. Again, I really don't think I needed to re-render that to show you what a, uh, what a slightly twisted tabletop would look like. But Okay, so that kind of is okay for me. Um, so the basic scene composition is fine. We've got our lamp in the middle of shot here. It's sort of okay. Um, and I mean, you can really do what you want with this. So you can sort of angle it upwards so you get less table in shot. Uh, more of a, a dramatic shot looking upwards at the lava lamp. It entirely depends on you. This is just basic camera positioning and work. Okay, so easy enough. Now, before we get started with any of the materials, I want to get the basic light in. And as I think I mentioned, I'm going to be using physical sun and sky for this, um, which seems a bit mad because we can't actually see the sky from here. So first things first, let's turn on the physical sun and sky by just going under physical sun and sky and create. And you'll notice that that turns on fine altogether. Now, these final gather settings are way, way, way too high, especially for test renders. So I'm going to turn the accuracy and more importantly, the point density from 1 to 0.1. And the accuracy went from its default of 100 to 30. I'm going to engage just one light bounce and I'm going to stick the point interpolation on 20, which will help out smooth the shot and take off any sort of sharp, bright points of light. And that should actually be enough. A lot of people start with final gather and they end up with huge, huge, huge amount of um, accuracy and point density and, and the render takes, you know, 15, 20 minutes and a lot of the time it's simply not necessary. 
Now, as you can see here, we've got something rather strange going on. Uh, our scene is black, but where our glass is, is not. This is because there's no light in here. This is simply a reflection, a reflection and a refraction that you can see. And there's no light because that physical light can't get through this, um, this environment we've put in here. So we need to give it away to get through. And I don't really want to start cutting out faces and, and all of this. So I'm going to just create an area light. Okay. Let's just get this somewhat into position. Now, what I want is to first get a camera angle that I'm happy with. So this one will do. I will then bookmark this camera angle. Uh, this just allows me to go back to it. So I'm not having to sort of spin out here, adjust my lights and then sort of find the camera angle again. So I'm going to, and with an area light, this thing that's sticking out here is the direction it's going to be pointed in. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort of move that. I'm going to scale it because unlike, say, a point light, uh, the scale of an area light is very important. The larger it is, the more light it will actually give out. So, and I'm just going to angle it downwards and bring it up here. Then go back to my camera view, get this out of shot. Let's have a look here. Okay. Aiming lights can be a bit tricky, and I think a tad larger. Okay. Let's flip back to our bookmark and we will see what that looks like. Okay, so now we've got some light in the scene. Um, but you'll see that the light in the scene, um, it doesn't really have anything to do with the physical sun and sky right now. It's just sort of white light, as you would expect. Now we need to get this area light. Um, and there is the actual sun direction. So if I change this sun direction, you won't see that an awful lot happens. We might get rid of some artifacting in the background. Um, in fact, let's point it over here. But the light color is not changing. Um, so we need this light color to change. I want this to be blue. I want it to reflect the sky. Um, so let's just get a better camera angle on this one I like more okay maybe zoom out a little bit and when I did the the render for this I put it dead center in the screen um, I think possibly slightly off center would have been a better look Again, this is just personal preference. It's um, it really has just to do with some artistic composition. If you could call one object any background artistic, but anyway, so there you go. There is our basic thing. But once again, our light is not connected to the visible sun and sky. So if I grab this here, now I'm going to use the light shape and make it visible. This is an essential step to what the next part is, which will be this light shader here. So mental ray lights, and I'm going to make this a portal light, and this will allow it to see the sky, regardless of the fact that there's geometry behind it. So if the sky is blue outside, this light will now be blue. Um, at a multiplier of one, it's probably not going to be anywhere near bright enough. It's not. Uh, but as you can see, there is a slight blue tinge to it now. So if I turn this multiplier up to, let's go all the way up to 25. Okay, you can see here that this is now what the sky was, which is a nice pale blue. In fact, if I bookmark the camera view and zoom out and render, you should see we have this physical sun and sky with this nice blue sort of tint to it. 
So if I come back here and I was to say move this light all the way up so it's now going to be sort of dusk outside, maybe sunset, oops, and re-render the scene, what you should see is it's all gone dark because this is now tipped up to the point where it's um, night time. So physical sun and sky now linked to this even though we can't see the geometry. If I flip this back down, okay, your scene comes back and if I flip it all the way back down it should be much brighter. Um, this is because this is now sort of a, a noon almost and obviously noon being brighter than say six seven o'clock in the evening so this light will control the color and to some extent the intensity of this so okay there is a nice gradiated fall off that i quite like as well and that's a basic light setup for this scene now this side is very dark so if you wanted to you could introduce another area light over here to sort of catch some highlights here. Um, you could then link that to the sun and sky with a portal light or not, as the case may be. But that is a very basic one light setup. Um, you could also use some sort of point light over here maybe. In fact, if I just drop one in for demonstration purposes, let's just go with a standard point light. There we go. And if I now bring this point light over here and re-render. Let's take a snapshot of that. The intensity is probably going to be too bright, way, way too bright. So if I was to drop that down to an intensity of say 0.1. Okay, this gives us a little bit more light in the scene. Um, personally, I don't think it's necessary. I kind of want that sort of dramatic, very dark look. Um, but again, up to you. Okay. Now, the other thing is materials. Our lights are, our basic lights are up, but let's just apply, first of all, um, some mental ray materials to this. So I'm going to be using the Mia Material X passes. And the Mir Material X and the Mir Material X passes are exactly the same material. One of them works with render passes, one does not. So I tend to just default to the passes one. If you've got a scene where you have some Mir Material Xs and you've decided that you're going to create some render passes, it's really not a problem. If you scroll down, you'll see Upgrade Shader and you can just click Upgrade to Mir Material X. Okay, knock the reflectivity down make it a bit darker and I'm going to assign this material which I'll call uh, environment to both the environment and the table for now okay and let's just render that okay so our basic one light setup is now in um, and now we're going to need to look at getting this quality up a little bit. Um, so you could just open up your render settings here, go to quality and whack it on production. But then you wouldn't know what has happened and why, so really it's not the best way. Let's do this manually. Now uh, these jagged edges are caused by a lack of anti-aliasing, so pop this one up to one. And you could pop it up to two or even three but this is considerable amount of render time added so I like to pop that up to 1 and this down to 0 0.05 um, this will aid the quality but won't quite take as long as if we pop this on 2 so again you should see those jagged edges start to disappear okay there we go and what I've got with this lighting, I'm not quite happy with the placement of it. So let's go and have a look at this area light. And I'd like it to come more from the front, so I'm going to push this here, uh, pull out a, a helpful handle here. 
Okay, and I'm going to sort of get that centered on to the lava lamp. And now when I move this, it will stay locked on to that position. So what I'd like to do is get it more up. And let's try that. I mean, unfortunately, there's no mystic um, formula for where to put your lights. It's just what looks better in the scene. At what time did you want the shadow here? Do you want the light striking full on frontwards? Um, you know, you really do need to experiment. Uh, and I am a bit down and actually a bit this way. And I think that will suit me. Um, before we re-render, what I would like to do is get rid of this awful fong material, uh, which is really not working for us at the moment. So let's just, again, go to Assign New Material. And I'm going to be using always mental ray materials. Now, as soon as I turn on the physical sun and sky, I tend to stick with the mental ray materials. So let's just go back again to one of these mere material X passes. And if we click under the material, you'll see it has some presets. I'm going to use glass thin as a basis for my preset. So now I render. OK, this is better. Um, obviously, this is not looking too much like glass. We'll sort this out in a minute. But it doesn't have this big reflective refraction horribleness to it. Um, so, OK. So I'm happy with the position of our one light. Uh, our object is pretty well lit. Our shadows are disappearing off back there. I would perhaps like to make this a bit bigger so I get to see a bit more of that shadow. Because, um, I mean, we made a nice soft shadow. I want to show it off a little bit. There we go. That will give us a bit more shadow. So there's the basic lighting done. And now over to these materials. Now we started off with this glass. Um, let me take a look and now hide this glass, so just control H so I can take a look at this and these components. So pretty much all we're going to shade. So assign new material to this top piece and again I'm going to use a mere material. This time I'm going to use the car paint. And again, no difference between the car paint and the car paint passes other than one works with render passes and one does not. So I want mine to be a silver color. So let's start off about here and maybe here. Well, you can see in our little swatch there, that's fairly silvery. OK. That was not it, was it? There we go. So there's our basic silver color. And now for this, I'm just going to assign a standard Mia Material X with a nice sort of bright red color. Sorry, if you notice this error here when I click render, you shouldn't get it. Normally I work on two monitors and one of them is currently off, so it keeps trying to pop the render window um, up on the other monitor, which it can't do. But anyway, there's our nice silver, silvery material. Maybe I'll make that a tad lighter. Whoops. So just grab it, material attributes. Here we go. Let's try one lighter. Uh, didn't make such a huge difference. Um, but it's definitely metallic and it's, it pretty much matches the reference. Um, so I'll leave you guys to experiment. Maybe you want to do a nice bright red one or a green one or or, you know, I don't really think I need to sit here and tell you that you could do a different color if you wanted to. But anyway, so there's the basics of that. Now, the main issue with this, of course, is this waxy sort of uh, material here in the middle of the lava lamp, which I believe actually is some sort of melted wax. And I wanted to sort of give it this funky internal light and effect glow color but also have it sort of semi-translucent and transparent. So I did this with a subsurface scattering material, which is what I'm going to use now. Um, 
I've already assigned this mean material x to it. Oh, there is method in my madness. I'm going to be using that in a second. But for now, I'll click here, assign new material. And let's find the Miss Fast Shader. Um, you can use the Miss Fast Shader too. It's a little bit more difficult because it doesn't make all the connections for you automatically. I do cover that in um, in the Mental Ray Lighting tutorial that we have on the site. Uh, so I'm not going to do it here for now. I'm just going to use the Mist Fast Shader X, which is also available in Maya 2010, 11, and 12. Okay, you'll see here use selected light map. Use selected, you really don't need a new one. Um, okay, I'm going to have to create a new one because I've run through this before, so I've got a, um, a light map already in place. Really doesn't matter. You could just have selected use selected or create a new one. It's much of a muchness. Okay, so material attributes. If we render right now, you should see we have now a subsurface scattering material on this. Okay, but it doesn't look very impressive. Now, I'm going to run through a cheat on the subsurface scattering material to get us this um, sort of glowing effect. So if I go to the fast shader, you'll see here that I get the back SSS weight. If I crank this up to 40 and re-render, you'll see that not a lot happens. Uh, it might go a little bit lighter. Okay, so you can see now you've got sort of a little bit more light pushing through from the back, but it's not this Oops, that's the wrong window. It's not this sort of lovely internal glow. Now, the reason for this is pretty much all mental ray materials have a conservation of energy. So they'll only show back to the camera the energy that's put into them. Um, so if you shine, let's say, a 20 watt light bulb at a tabletop, it's not going to bounce 80 watts of light back at you. This is what makes mental ray materials good for photorealistic rendering. But we want to cheat because I don't want to spend time setting up a light surface or hiding lights in this or doing any one of a myriad of hundred things doing the glow in post-production. I want this en uh, material, this subsurface scattering material, to give off more energy than I'm putting into it. So if I go under algorithm storage, you can see screen composite, turn it off, re-render. Okay, now we're talking, now I'm seeing a lot more light sort of push through this. And if we up the samples here, to say, and these samples are not like area light samples, you know, there, there isn't a massive difference between 64 and 128. So I'm just going to crank these all the way up to 1024. For a final render, I might put these as high as, say, 50,000. You really do sometimes need to go mad with this value. Uh, so let's hit that again. Okay, and upping those samples has also gotten rid of a lot of that graininess. Now before I go any further, you'll remember that I originally assigned a red mere material X to this. Now, you might have thought that was a, a bit redundant because we are already now using a different material, but actually it was not. If I pop open the hypershade, which happens to me all the time, by the way, I must use the hypershade 400 times a day and every single time I do a tutorial, which I've been doing now for 12 years, I for some reason cannot find it. But anyway, I'm going to middle mouse drag this mere material, which is the first bright shiny red material we assigned to our lava lamp goo. And I'm just going to drag it in the diffuse shader slot of the Miss Fast shader. Now, when I render, You should see a slight red tinge in this. Okay, so we're getting sort of a reddish color. Now I'm also going to use that as the specular shader.
Okay, and now you can see I'm starting to get something that looks a little bit more like this waxy lava. So, let us start altering the color of these. Let's make this one sort of a light pinkish color. And this is just a case now of what color you actually want your um, lava lamp gooiness to be. So you could get any color you wanted in here, a red sort of color, a green, um, I mean literally, um, I mean I'm going to say blue now, which would just be red, green or blue as we all know. But, you know, really any color you want, it's fine. Um, blending colors together to create just some, you know, funky sort of um, waxy blobs, the kind that you would see in a lava lamp. Okay, so as you can see, you can get some real, and if I move this, change the frame, so we get a different look, you'll see that it actually sort of changes, shifts colors and hues. Um, okay, you're seeing we're getting a little grainy on the texture, uh, but we'll sort this out in the final quality. And again, you can bump up or down this back weight to simulate this light quality and let's go here now and just change this to say fifty thousand now this doesn't take so much longer to render um, but it does take mental ray a little while to just bump it up that high so if Maya seems to have frozen on you it has not it'll come back in about 30 seconds Okay, there we go, it's back, and I'll just whack this. Okay, it is taking a bit longer to render with so many samples, but not a huge amount of time. Okay, there we go. So there is our lava and uh, lava. I don't know what you call it in a lava lamp, um, wax lava, whatever you want. But there it is. Um, you can now experiment with this subsurface scattering material. So if I turn the diffuse weight down a bit, you'll get less of this red color. And if I bump this up, you'll get more energy pushed through from the back. So you will get. Um, and this is the problem with turning the samples up. Now every time I change something with this material. Mental Ray throws a bit of a hissy fit and I have to wait 20-30 seconds. It's not such a big issue, but something to be aware of. Because there are a couple of times when I first did this, I thought the program had actually crashed and forcibly closed it. It has not. It just takes it a while. So anyway, experiment here. You'll find the perfect sort of balance for the wax that you want. Now what I would do to give this a bit of a kick up the backside is to introduce a point light and let's just grab that move it up and I'm just going to pop it in the middle of this lava now one thing to remember is that without shadows on lights will just shine through geometry so click the shadows on because we just want to give this a little bit more illumination down the bottom here so let's see if that worked Okay, it's given us a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, but it's very subtle. So let's crank this up to 50, just to see that working and snapshot that. Okay, as you can see, that worked before, after. So lighten this up is a pretty simple affair. It hasn't, because it has the shadows on, it hasn't actually introduced a bunch of other light into the scene, which is nice because I'm quite happy with this sort of basic um, basic basic lighting setup that we've got so let's reintroduce our glass which you can find here so just select it and to get it back you can press shift H which will show hidden um, you can also click under the channel box and visibility turn that back to on okay so let's render this with the glass and everything else Okay, there we go. That's pretty nice looking um, 
wax in there actually I think I prefer it to the original that I did but there you go um, so a couple of things this glass tube is very boring this one has some nice sort of shadows on it highlights on it should I say and you also you can see a reflection there if you look closely of this in the background um, it's also a bit of a better color so let's go ahead now and fix this glass material and part of the problem is not the actual glass material itself part of the problem is because we've set our quality ourselves we only really did this um, anti-aliasing so let's also go to Mitchell for this and under ray tracing you'll see reflection and refraction limit now I'm going to push this to 5 5 and generally the max trace depth is the sum of these two so 5 5 and 10 and you'll see that this gets better already so let's render region I can see the reflection in the back of the glass now which is perfect but I still need something more um, so what I'd like to do is get these white stripes and I'm going to use a simple reflection card for that so create a polyplane pull it out here whoops there we go thank you Maya and give it a rotate and get it the sort of size we want it okay that should do it for us let's just move it to the very side get it sort of front facing again you might need to play around with the position of your reflection card um, I want a stripe down here another one in the back so this should just about do it let's have a look let's move it this way a bit too and jump back to our camera view there we go oh, a bit further out I'm going to apply to this a surface shader so a standard Maya material for once surface shader and I'm using a surface shader because it's not affected by light so if I set it to white it will be white regardless of what light is shining on it and now a render and there we go our glass has these nice white reflection card stripes now you might want to tinker around the position of these um, get them either a little more here or right just highlight in the edge but I'll leave that for you because I don't think anyone wants to sit here and watch me move around a big white plane in Maya and that's pretty much it one thing I did notice when I came to actually render out the animation for this is that if we go back to one of the start frames you can see this material here has actually bisected the geometry that's because when we meshed our particles the mesh was a little little tiny bit too big so um, I'll be back in a second and I'll show you what this does to the rest. now we've put so much light in the bottom here it does quite look funky but you can't really see it in this tiny view but where it's bisecting does become a problem when you start to animate it and there is a very simple way around this it, again it's a bit of a cheat but um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the odd occasional cheat so if we flip down here I'm just going to scale it in X to 0.97 let's say and 0.97 now I'm not going to scale the Y um, simply because it's not poking out the top or the bottom it's just the sides and that should do it so that will give us um, something that's flipped to one of the end frames we'll keep that render and there we go um, if you want to increase the quality of this you can jack up the anti-alias in a bit if we go into our quality settings it seems like this is still a bit jaggedy so you might actually end up need to take this to two um, your reflections and refractions are absolutely fine I think uh, shadows instead of simple you can use segments which should give you better quality um, again you'll need to play with your subsurface scattering material to to get the balance of the whole thing right 
uh, mental core you probably won't have it's a third party um, lightning rendering engine and also on your area light here you could increase the samples a little bit more but again be aware that the more those samples go up the higher your render time is going to be so I'm going to put this to 64 I really don't like to go above 64 in fact most of the time I stay on 32 um, if it can be uh, avoided to crack this up then please avoid it because this is a 30 second render if I just re-render uh, bearing in mind we just tweak the anti-alias in a little and turn this up I think we'll probably end up with about 1 minute 30 Okay, and there we go, that wasn't bad for a guest. I said 1.30, it was 1.25. Um, so we've added a, almost a minute to our render time just by increasing this and the anti-alias. And bear in mind this is the size of a postage stamp, so as soon as you get into HD, that minute could become five minutes, which is a bit more of a problem over 300 frames. But there you go. Um, there are a couple of much more comprehensive mental ray tutorials that I just finished, uh, this month and last month in the paid for section of the site and yes that was a blatant plug but hopefully this video has given you enough information with our simple modeling dynamics and simple lighting and some basics of the subsurface texturing um, subsurface scattering sorry to to get you started on doing your own lava lamp so if you do please post it up in the forum love to see it and thank you for watching goodbye